going on growers james piccioni coming to you live from jersey summer is here and the gardens are looking better than they ever have so today i want to bring you along for a tour of the three food forests and show you what we're harvesting today let's go <laughs> Over eight years ago, I started planting this food forest and these grapes here were one of the first things that I put in. There's only two grape vines here and you can see how much they're producing. Nice large clusters of grapes and hopefully we'll be harvesting a lot of those really soon. And these poles right here, this was the original entrance to the garden and the idea was like, it was like a doorway where you walk into a, a different living system, you know, not a living room like you would be inside, but an actual living room, a living garden. And Bill Mollison talks about that, how the birds and everything are a part of a forest. You can't separate them. And that's what's happening here. Even in the grapes, we've had it in the past too. This section right here, there's grape uh, birds making little nests. In the past, we've had robin's eggs in some of the other grapes we have over there in the Concord grapes too. So you can't really separate it. You can try to keep the birds away a little bit, but you have to share a little bit because you can't separate the forest from itself. And I can honestly say that this garden has become a forest, mimicked after a natural forest, but different. This is a food forest where we have replaced a lot of those natural trees with fruiting species, things like peaches. We've got some small peaches here just still getting ready to ripen up on an older tree. And then here's another grape right behind that. These are the Concord grapes. These are the ones that we like making jelly out of. And this is the one that years ago we had a robin's nest and the robins were laying eggs in here. And those blue eggs next to the green grapes, it was so cool to see. And these, we've got another peach tree right here. So we've got a number of different fruit trees. That's the idea, a high level of diversity. And we've got blackberries and stuff too. We're always extending our season by growing so many different kinds of berries. And when it comes to permaculture, Bill Mollison has this little quote and I don't know exact quote of it, but this is just basically the basis of it. And what Bill says is, when it comes to permaculture, no one really knows what they're doing, but as long as what you do works, you won't really have to do anything. So that's the idea of creating a system that works for you, that's functional, that actually takes care of itself. A question that I get all the time is, James, how do you water a garden that big? Well, when it comes to this garden and a lot of the large perennials, I don't water them anymore. I watered them when I first put them in, but now I've got a thick wood chip mulch that has just built great soil over the years and it just sucks up the water like a sponge. We had a big rain uh, recently and it just sucked it right up and goes right into the root system. I'm going to grab a carrot because we've got this guy here, this 10 year old head of garden security, an absolute veteran, never takes a day off, earns everything he gets, right boy? So we're going to see if he wants a carrot. Want a carrot tuck? Up here boy. Carrot. See if he wants to harvest it himself. Want this one boy? Want this? No? I'll just pull it out for him. Oh, you can see how easy they come out when they're uh, in the raised bed. And he likes the big orange ones like that. Uh, we'll have a little tug of war, give him a piece. And there's a lot of nice carrots in here. I'll grab a couple more. And they just come out like butter in this, uh, in this nice soil. When you have good soil structure, that's a good shaped carrot and that's because you have good soil structure. Carrots need really soft, loamy soil. They don't, if you have rocky soil, it can really ruin the shape of your carrots. So we've got a lot to harvest throughout the video. We're gonna to continue to do that. I wanna show you the raised bed built out of pallets real quick while Tuck is sn snacking on that because that one's just doing fantastic. And the clips have worked really well. Look at the size of these tomatoes. They've already reached like, uh, I'd say close to six foot. I know I have a little addition with the bed, but still, these things are massively tall already. They're loaded with tomatoes, and it looks like my cherry tomatoes are just getting very close to ripe, probably only like, I don't know, a couple weeks away. So soon, our salads are gonna be filled with all different tomatoes, and I just cannot wait. I don't eat tomatoes any time of the year until we can get them fresh from the garden. So even if I get a sub sandwich or something, I don't put any tomatoes on it, because the tomatoes from the store, they don't taste like anything. They taste so bland. The tomatoes from my garden, Jersey tomatoes, good varieties. It's, you really can't compare it to anything else. It looks like Tuck is still snacking on that carrot. It must be a good sweet one. And right here, we've got a raised bed with a bunch of large tomatoes too, and some kale. Look at this kale, look how beautiful it is. This is the dazzling blue kale. The color on the veins, so beautiful. And it's got a good flavor too. I've mentioned it before, still not as good as the dino, the lacinato kale. But I wanna show you some of the stuff behind it, or in front of me right here. We've got some of the hazelnuts that look huge, more fruit on them than they've ever had. And look, more tomatoes too. Right here, we've got a lot of nice peppers also. All different varieties. You can see some purple varieties. And we're trying to get the most out of the space. So we always have the next rounds of lettuces coming up, using that space, utilizing it. And then on this side here, to utilize the space, we've got watermelon, 
planted along the edge. They're gonna trellis along the food forest and just grow along and we're gonna have to just kind of walk around them. We're gonna do the same thing with pumpkins too. And it's a great time of year because all the flowers are starting to all bloom. So we've got the echinaceas in here. We've got the California poppy. We've got different pink poppies in the other garden. So the whole aesthetics of the garden is starting to come together too, which uh, makes everything even more fun. And this hazelnut, oh my gosh. You can see how much it's actually starting to droop. And uh, it's got so many hazelnuts on it this year. This one is uh, the thing I'm most excited about over anything in the whole garden. I'm in the new food forest now. I was just right over there. Those are the hazelnuts right there. And I wanted to just show you things in this garden from a first person perspective. And this one's only put in just a few years ago. So anyone could get this garden in pretty quickly. And right here are the brassicas. They're doing fantastic. Some of these cauliflowers are actually starting to head up. There's a purple cauliflower. So the head's starting to form in there, which is awesome. And some of the cabbages are starting to finish. Some of these purple ones. We got the Red Express cabbage and another variety too. Look at that shape on that cabbage. It's gonna be beautiful. I can't wait to show those. And they're getting super close. Tuck's still in here hanging out with me. As I move forward, we've got some broccolis and stuff too. And still even different varieties of cabbages. So we may be growing a lot of cabbages, but we're growing a lot of different kinds. So I like cutting up cabbages, dicing them up and eating them just in salads, raw. I think it's delicious. We've got some dragon tongue beans here. This is my favorite variety of green bean. Not only does it look incredible, it tastes so good too. And it's just a, such a stunning, stunning color on that. Look at that. Man, so beautiful. And again, these taste fantastic. It's not one of those things that looks cool, but tastes bad. It actually tastes really good. Looks like we're starting to get a bit of a drizzle. It's raining here a little, but that's okay. The food forest will drink it all in. And we've got a lot of flowers, like I mentioned, marigolds, a couple different kinds. And here's my other favorite variety of bush beans. These are the purple dove bush beans. Again, another one that looks beautiful, but actually tastes incredible too. So a great combo. And we've got more carrots next to it and some peppers and the calendula. These finally started to flower. The white one, it looks so beautiful. So really cool having different flowers mixed in next to lettuces and stuff. And this is definitely the most productive the garden has ever been. So many cucumbers in here ripe too. So we've got a lot of stuff that we need to harvest. Soon we're gonna be doing some harvest videos and I think they're gonna be the best ones we've ever done. So make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button if you guys wanna see more and don't forget to use our Amazon affiliate link whenever you're doing your shopping. And these are parsnips. Some of these are probably close to being ready. So Bill Mollison talks about parsnips. He says that they're fantastic if you bake them in the oven, just eat them like that. So we'll try it out more lettuces and stuff. Here's the ground cherries, these are almost ready. If you wanna try like a unique little fruit, you should try some ground cherries. And they're almost ripe. You can see they're in these little, these little baskets right there. And the flavor isn't amazing, but it's unique and it's pretty good. Some carrots right here. And this is the square foot garden. The square foot garden is so productive. As you can see, we're doing permaculture and food forest, but we're blending in this idea of raised bed, this idea of high intense gardening. And it's just worked out incredibly for me. I uh, couldn't be any happier. Here's some more cauliflower right there heading up. It's a white one. And let me show you these poppy right here. These pink poppy are just so beautiful. The California poppy, the orange used to be my favorite, but I love these pink ones now. And they were beautiful this morning, but they're starting to recede a little bit, I think. They're getting sad now that the rain's coming and the sun's going in. Some of the onions are starting to get really big too, which is really, really cool. And the grapes along the fence line. Those look fantastic with the basils and stuff. So I've got some basils that are starting to flower. You wanna make sure you're picking off the heads of your basils when they're flowering. And right here is the trellis that we built just recently for the tomatoes, working out fantastically. And I couldn't be happier with the way the tomatoes are growing or the tomato clips. So I'll put a link for the tomato clips if you guys wanna use those. It's making tying up tomatoes easy, convenient, and fun to do. Honestly, it's it's one of the better decisions I've made, especially when it comes to tomatoes. Talk's looking for a cucumber in there. Look at him. He's trying to find something. Hey, Tuck, what do you got there, boy? <laughs> you know, he's just, he's had such a blast in here. Just looking for his own stuff. Tuck, you want a cucumber, boy? We'll, we'll get him one. Come on, boy, let's go. Let's grab a cucumber. Sometimes he gets in trouble for taking him, so he doesn't want to go after it right away. You can have it, boy. Go ahead. There he goes. <laughs> He's so funny, he seriously has his own personality. And I posted on Instagram a story early this morning. He just comes out here, races in front of me and looks for his own cucumber. So we'll just let him continue to eat that. And a lot of tomatoes I planted right into the ground too with the thick wood chip mulch. Works fantastic for my tomatoes. And the zucchini are just doing excellent. I've talked about it before, but this variety is 
by far the best I've ever done and I probably won't be growing that many other zucchini varieties in the future. Maybe just to try them, but the Castata Romanesco, it's tough to beat. And we've got some ones back there. A lot of ripe zucchini, so we're picking those. And look at those sunflower, man. They're like eight and a half, nine feet already. Incredible. Before I move into the other food forest, I just wanted to show you this corner where we're just getting so much production. These huge zucchinis, uh, the plants are doing great. We've already harvested a bunch of zucchinis from them. These unique different sunflowers over here, watermelon, a bunch of different melons mixed in. Look at the size of these zucchini leaves. Insane, so really cool. We're giving away a lot of the zucchini, but we're making sure we stay on top of harvesting it so we continue to get more. And we've got some tomatoes coming up from seed. I usually don't let tomatoes come up from seed. That's because I grow some hybrid varieties of tomato. So if you let hybrid varieties come up from seed, then they're not gonna grow true to seed, like your heirloom wood or your open pollinated wood. So hybrid seeds are good, tomatoes are good to grow, especially for new growers. It doesn't mean they're GMO or anything. It just means they're hybrid. It just means they're gonna get better production and grow easier, basically. I'm over at the third food forest now. Sometimes we call this a side garden because it's on the side of the house. Right here are the black cap raspberries. These are in full production right now. They've got so many berries on them. And I've been eating these like crazy. These are one of my favorite berries to come out and eat in the morning. And we've got the Asian pear right here. That's doing pretty well. It's got some good fruit on it. And then we've also got an elderberry over there. It's just flowering. That'll have berries in a little while. But my favorite thing in this garden is the blueberries. I've got blueberries in this section as the main crop. And I've got other blueberries sprinkled in other gardens. Like I showed you in the previous video. Whoops, dropped a berry. Like I showed you in the previous video, we had the blueberries in that section in the new food forest. And those blueberries are getting eaten a lot by the birds. That's because there's a section where there's two maple trees and the birds just hang out in the maple trees. And they watch me and they wait for me to go inside. Once I go inside, they swoop down and grab the blueberries. They think they're outsmarting me. But the thing is, those are just decoy blueberries. My main blueberry crop is in here. And these aren't getting touched by the birds. So the birds are getting, they think they're outsmarting me, but I think Tuck is actually outsmarting them. So this was his tactic to do some decoy berries. We didn't plan it like that, it just happened. But that goes back to Bill Mollison when, when you're working with nature, sometimes things just happen. Sometimes things just come together. The only way they can come together is if you get out there and you get planting. One more thing I wanna show you before I leave. Someone mentioned it in my other berry video. They said, James, you should try to put some Saskatoons in. We've got some Saskatoons. They're in high production right now too. So the Saskatoon is also known as service berry. And there's some good berries. This is a blueberry, looks a little different, but they kind of look similar to the Saskatoon as we come right here. Here's the Saskatoons. And this is the service berry. These are absolutely loaded. See how they're similar looking to the blueberry. Uh, they're sweet, almost have like a, like a little hint of a tea flavor to them. So what I like to do is come out and grab all the berries that are ripe and then get them all in the same hand. So these are all these berries. I gotta grab one more, more. the boysenberry that's back behind me here. So these have some huge fruit. This is the combination berry. It's a, it's a blackberry mixed with like a raspberry and they've got some massive, massive fruits on them. And these are sour. So I bet combined with the Saskatoon, you're gonna get that sour and sweet. It's probably gonna be really good. So this is what you can do when you grow your own food. And Bill Mollison, Bill Mollison says, he's my favorite person to quote because he's the father or grandfather, whatever you wanna call him. I call him the father of permaculture. He says, if you want organic food, you gotta grow it yourself. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you feel encouraged to get your own food forest in. It's a unique garden. It's a fun garden, and it's an overall just a great journey to be a part of. And anyone can do this. That's the fun thing. What me and Tuck did was nothing special. It was just these small little investments over time all accumulating together. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, do not forget to use our Amazon affiliate link to start your shopping. It costs you nothing. And and gives me and Tuck just a little piece. Also, me and Tuck are now on TikTok and Instagram. We're posting stories on the Instagram, so make sure you follow those socials and our Twitter too. We'll catch you guys real soon. We 